Uh, then another pattern that we can find will be uh, seasonal and cyclical, right? They are kind of basically similar in meaning except for some fine differences. So uh, seasonal, as the word suggests, means that there is some kind of repeated pattern, much like cyclical as well, right? So in both cases, there is a repeat of the pattern in the data. For example, if I'm selling winter clothings, uh, in spring, I might sell a little bit. In uh, summer, I might sell even lesser. In winter, uh, more and in, uh, sorry, in autumn more and in winter, even higher. Suppose that's the case. Now, if we do this, whether we have averaging method or trend method, they're not right because trend will say that in the summer of next year, uh, we will have surprisingly very, very high sales, right? Which is not right. Uh, so, so this pattern is expected to repeat itself, although maybe with some minor fluctuations here and there, but it essentially is a repeated pattern, right? So if we have this kind of pattern, which we will see a lot because a lot of businesses are uh, cyclical or seasonal, uh, if you're selling corporate gifts yeah, because of the financial year, there is always this seasonal uh, expenditure that is being sought after. So uh, seasonal patterns, uh, data exhibiting that a lot, a lot. And we need to have another, yet another algorithm, another sort of uh, category of methods to deal with that. For cyclical, uh, that is like seasonal, except that the pattern takes up uh, longer than a year. So if it's within a year, then this is seasonal. If it is, if the pattern stretches beyond a year, then it is called cyclical. For example, uh, financial year kind of repetitions, right? That's seasonal uh, pattern. If you're talking about economy or real estate property cycles uh, and the stock market boom and crash, right? So all these will take sometimes five years, 10 years, 15 years. But, you know, there's some agreement that there is repetition in the, in the pattern. And so to that extent, it is cyclical data. And finally, the last part uh, will not require drawing because that is basically just the rest of uh, the patterns data patterns that we are unable to categorize under horizontal, trend, seasonal, and cyclical, right? So uh, that sounds like very uh, broad. Have we missed out anything else, right? But, but that's the extent to which we are going to analyze data patterns. So when we take a set of data, we we'll try to put it under one of these categories. Because when we try to do that, number one, we are making an assumption, an attitude about the data about whether what goes up will come down or will not come down, right? And uh, what goes up will repeat itself, right? So in seasonal and cyclical. So when we take up that attitude, it also means that we select a certain set of formulas to do our number crunching, all right? So, so, so that's the way we uh, need to be aware of. And one more aspect before we try to do the number crunching is about the time span of applicability. Now, of course, uh, as we started off saying, forecasting is not about predicting a business variable value far into the future. It's often, uh, you know, near to the present, a little bit into the future. And that value, that estimate will tend to be uh, very useful because it tends to be uh, more accurate. So for most of the time, we will deal with short range forecasting and short range the range here the, uh, sorry the word short is relative short in um, in um, in uh, forecasting economy in forecasting GDP for a country could mean one year right so so the next value is one year away and that's considered short range because the data is all taken uh, at one year intervals uh, but short can be also very very short down to Let's forecast tomorrow's demand for our shampoo products. Yeah, so that's daily basis. And down to even shorter intervals like speed trading. 
that every 10 milliseconds let's forecast i mean of course we run computer software but every 10 seconds let's forecast what's going to be the uh, stock price uh, 10 milliseconds later into the future but very very near to the present that short yeah. so in those cases we almost always end up using quantitative methods like time series or statistical forecasting and so on for medium range uh, that, that will be something like you know two, two years to five years kind of uh, forecasting and it is of course because of the absolute duration of the time even if your cycle repeats every five years it tends not to be very accurate so even if you're using uh, quantitative methods the calculation can be very precise but it is not right or it is it has a lot of inherent errors so uh, mid-range we tend to use a mix right of short range and long range forecasting methods so we have less focus on the quantitative methods but uh, we, we take a bit of you know various uh, calculations and also our own heuristics understanding about the situation now for long range forecasting this is mostly qualitative this comes in when the business variable that you are predicting is going to be uh, of in some sense of the two categories one is it is far into the future whenever it is far into the future many many other variables come in right uh, for example we might not know when another pandemic might happen so uh, it might just upset all kinds of very very precise calculations so the longer uh, further into the future you try to forecast the more uh, chances for you to be wrong because anything can come in along the way yeah so for long-range forecasting when it falls into these two criteria very far into the future or it may not be far into the future but it's very complicated okay so if it's very complicated because we upfront know that a lot of factors a lot of variables a lot of players are at work and it is not uh, right at all to think about oh well we just measure one variable and that's uh, going to be an accurate forecast example right uh, far into the future example let's uh, forecast the GDP of Singapore 20 years from now because if the GDP is going to be high we can think about building a lot of uh, expensive but important infrastructure um, that requires a lot of money and we can start uh, planning for that now oh but if GDP is going to be low then we better think about some sort of uh, uh, money saving and uh, economical methods to do what we want to do right and to live properly so that kind of number is both important but very hard to to uh, achieve or forecast then what do we do we don't do time series like what we are going to discuss but we will we will survey right we will talk to a panel of economists uh, talk to experts and talk to uh, various people who we think would have more credibility and ability to tell us into the future considering all the factors right considering all the possible unpredictable uh, things that might come in to upset the situation yet still they should be able to tell us something right so that's what we have seen and that is kind of uh, the best we can do another example will be uh, that it may not be long range in time but it is complex right so for example if if um, someone is in the uh, operating theater uh, undergoing surgery and that patient needs to know the outcome yeah okay uh, what will happen to my case asks the patient right after the surgery will I be able to walk will I be able to participate in sports you know these are complex questions because surgery is complex and the outcome is complex and the recovery is complex and the patient's you know way of treating post-surgery activities complex so uh, do we use time series we use formulas no it's just one instance right so it's complex not really far into the future but how do we forecast we still have to do something uh, well we ask the doctor 
right? So, so we ask, and that's qualitative opinion. Doctor might say, well, um, shouldn't be a problem uh, because I've been seeing your case for the past three months. I think your body is really very strong. Uh, you have the means to, uh, and you're very uh, sports oriented. I think you have the physique to recover well, says the doctor, right? So those are opinions, those are qualitative. Are they helpful? Sure, right, they are very helpful. Uh, and uh, is that giving us a number? Oh, you're 90% uh, healthy, oh, you're 20% healthy. No, we don't get a number, but it's very, very useful. So between uh, short, medium and long range, we choose different methods to uh, achieve some sort of estimate about the future quantities, right? So that's basically uh, what we are after. All right, so we'll discuss uh, the actual methods of time series, uh, how we calculate them uh, in the next section.